Hi, it's me, Jazzy. I'm back with another tech-related video, and today it's kind of a viewer request sort of situation. You might remember recently I did a Timu Tech Tool testing time video, and I featured a couple of these 9-volt lithium rechargeable batteries. Well, it seems that they've generated rather a lot of interest and quite a few requests for a teardown. So I thought, okay, Let's go ahead and take a look at them. Now, I've been trying these batteries out in a few devices. I've tried them in a couple of multimeters. I tried them in my signal tracer. They don't seem to make any difference to the readings I was getting on the multimeters, even at like really small values. And I didn't get any particular noise on the signal tracer or anything. So the only weird thing I've found with these is they suddenly just stop working. There must be some sort of cutout circuitry or something and it will seemingly measure 9.2 volts on the terminals and then suddenly you get nothing. Nothing else left to do other than tear it down. Let's get it on the bench and take it to bits. All right, let's see if we can get one of these apart and see what's inside. Okay, so I'm guessing there's going to be some sort of screw or clip or something. I'm going to need to get this label off. To be honest, I didn't think there would be so much interest in these batteries, but so many people have asked me to tear one down, so how can I refuse? All right, I'm not seeing anything on this side. I'm hoping there's some sort of screws or something, otherwise I have just removed the label for no good reason. Yep, I have removed the label for no good reason. I saw another YouTuber tear one of these down and they took the label off and there was two screws there. And that's kind of what I was hoping to see, but no, we need to get this open. Alright, I'm just kidding. Ah, there we go. See, I didn't need to take the label off. Oh, okay. All right, this is completely different to the one I saw Big Clive take apart. JDW 9 volt PCB, TC15 V1.1, P plus, P minus, and we've got our lithium cell here. So on the lithium battery pack itself, it does state 1200 milliamp hours. Now they do claim 1200 milliamp hours on the battery, but that's not 1200 milliamp hours at 9 volts. That's 1200 milliamp hours at 3.7 volts. Or well, they do give the 4400 milliwatt hours there. So 1200 milliamp hours times by the 3.7 volts that we're getting from the lithium battery pack gives us 4440 milliwatt hours, which is pretty much what they're claiming on the lithium battery pack. But we're not asking for 3.7 volts, we're asking for 9 volts. So divide that by 9, and that gives us 493.3 milliamp hours. So at 9 volts, we're a little shy of our 1200 milliamp hours, aren't we? It's actually closer to 500 milliamp hours at 9 volts. Now, I'm going to test this on the DC load and see if I can get a representation anywhere near that 500 milliamp hours. You never know, it might surprise us. Right, so here we go, we're going to test the battery capacity now using the DC load. So the 9 volt battery is fully charged, I've just taken it off of charge and we're going to run the test at 100 milliamps and we're going to see if we get near well the calculations came out as 493 milliamp hours so i suspect we'll be somewhere around the 450 to 490. okay so i've cut the footage for time so let's check in now we're at just over four hours now oh there we go oh we're done already wow battery end capacity is 410 milliamp hours do you know, I thought we might get a bit more than that. I, I was expecting somewhere around the 450 mark. Okay, so since I've done this, I've ran the test two more times and I'm getting very similar result each time. So this was the most I was able to get out of it, it was 410 milliamp hours. 
Out of curiosity, I did also repeat the test at 200 milliamps and 500 milliamps, but the battery was getting rather warm, so I discontinued that test rather quickly. Well, there you go. So nowhere near our 1200 milliamp hours that they claim on the front of the battery. You certainly wouldn't get 1200 milliamp hours at nine volts. Apparently you get 410. The battery's not hot at all. It's not really hot in any serious way. Let's see what we get on the terminals. Yeah, see, it's still reading 9.2 volts. You don't get an accurate reading off the terminals because you're not reading the actual lithium battery pack. You're reading through the circuitry. So it's telling you what it wants to tell you. Right, so they're using some sort of boost circuit here to get this 3.7 volts up to the nine volts that we want from our nine volt battery. So there's some sort of foam pad on here stuck on the PCB just to protect it from the lithium battery pack. Let's peel that off so we can have a better look. Here we go. Right, so what have we got in here? So we've got a chip here, U2, which is a 4056. Now that's the Lion battery charging circuitry there. And then we've got U3 there, which is a, it's an 8628. For that's a DC to DC converter. You can see it's got inductor next to it there, diode to rectify that. And we've got a MOSFET there at the top, U4. I'm wondering if that might be what cuts the power to the terminals when the lithium battery pack is discharged below a certain level, possibly. So here's a couple of components that are not fitted on this board, look, U5 and R5. There's probably different iterations of this board. Uh, you've also got down there, bottom right, there's the two LEDs. We've got a red LED for when it's charging and a green LED for when it's done. You can see it just literally shows through a little hole in the bottom of the casing next to the USB-C there. So you can see when it changes from red to green. You can see it more clearly without the casing there. So on the terminals, I'm still reading 9.3 volts. So you're not really getting an accurate battery capacity from that. Because if I go on the actual battery pack here, B plus and B minus. Yeah, just over four volts. I wonder if the battery's recovered a bit after our test. So if you do a bit of probing around on the board, you can find some voltages. The DC to DC converter was showing as 4.06 volts as well, but I couldn't see the 9 volt output. It's possibly a pulse. Maybe if I'd put a scope on it, I might be able to see it. But here's what you do get when you put it on the scope. As you can see, not a very clean output, more like a switch mode power supply type of output. If I go on the diode, which is probably rectifying the output, I would hazard a guess. You can see the 4.06 volts there. And if we go on the other end, you can see the 9.28 coming from the DC to DC converter. And it measures the same across the output terminals, 9.28. At this point, the battery pack voltage dropped and the circuit cut off. So I didn't get any more readings. I kind of gave up at that point, to be honest. It doesn't behave like a normal battery. It's hard to measure it in terms that you would measure a regular nine volt battery. So it will give you a reading, it will give you 9.2 volts and then it will suddenly cut off as the circuitry cuts off. It's intriguing and it's really interesting to see what's inside. You can see what they've done, but yeah, it definitely does not give you the claimed 1200 milliamp hours, certainly not at nine volts. The most I got was 410 milliamp hours at nine volts. Well, there you go. At least now you know what is inside one of these Puji Max 9 volt lithium rechargeable batteries. I didn't know. I was none the wiser. Now we can see the circuitry that makes it work. You've got that Lion battery charger chip in there, which seems to manage the charging of the battery. I can also see from when I was delving around measuring voltages on the board that once that lithium battery pack reaches a certain voltage, the circuit just cuts out. It just stops. There are other different types of these that you can get, which I think might be more ideal for what I need. So although it seems 
a bargain at first. It could be fine for things like torches and radios and things, but even then I had one viewer commented that one of these type of batteries was giving additional noise on the radio. So I guess it depends on the brand and type. Anyway, to satisfy your curiosity and mine, that's what's inside it. So thanks for joining me today for this very brief look in this 9 volt battery. At least now we know what's on the inside. As always, massive thanks to everyone for watching, sharing, liking and subscribing. If you do fancy hitting the subscribe button, it's always massively appreciated and helps to support the channel. I'll be back soon with some more tech related videos. But in the meantime, take care and I'll see you on the next one.